This is soil, brown, dirty. This is why we wipe our feet at the door. This is also soil. It's a living system. It contains microorganisms and mesoorganisms like earthworms. It's a living community. It basically has supported our population. In fact, it's even allowed our population to grow. It, has, it is what's allowed us to feed ourselves. It's basically the substrate of all terrestrial life. And today, I want to talk about my vision for agriculture. I look at soil. I'm a soil scientist. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been on probably more than 1,000 farms in the last 30 years. And I've never had a conventional farmer show me his or her soil, which I think is kind of interesting. I love farmers, but I like soil. I've never not had a no-till farmer or an organic farmer show me their soil. They always show me their soil. In fact, they show me their soil so much I almost get tired of it. They want to show me their earthworms and their structure. So to tell you about my vision, we need to go back about almost 30 years to 1985. And it all started right here in the Palouse of Washington State. An undergraduate student, Avon Unger, came into my office. I was her undergraduate advisor. She was getting her bachelor's degree in soil. She wanted to do an independent study, and she wanted to learn how to measure soil properties on a farm in the But she also wanted to look at those microbes. Now keep in mind that those microbes in the soil, those bacteria, produce many of the antibiotics that we actually use to ward off our diseases. She wanted to know, well, what are they doing in the soil? Are they active? Are they more abundant? So Lloyd Elliott, a colleague of mine, a soil microbiologist, he and Yvonne and I knew of these two farms, organic, conventional, out in the Palouse. The organic farm had been organic for 37 years. In fact, both farms had broken ground in 1909. In 1948, the conventional started adding synthetic fertilizers and pesticides in the organic state organic. And we looked at these farms, and what we found was amazing. We found much higher organic matter content on the organic farms, much better fertility, and we also found more microbes. We also found better structure. We also found that the organically farmed soil eroded at one-third to one-quarter the rate of the conventional, which is a big deal around here. I thought that was pretty amazing. We published our results. But I had some of these economist friends that said to me, you know, John, soil's okay, but we're talking dollars here. Are they making money? So I took a year off a sabbatical, went off to New Zealand to look at multiple organic and conventional farms and to look at not just the soil health, but also the profitability of those farms. And when I was over there, I kept bumping into these biodynamic farmers. And biodynamic farmers are basically really strict organic farmers. If you can imagine someone being more strict than organic, it's the biodynamic farmers. Biodynamics actually preceded organic farming. It started in 1924. They actually had certified food Demeter in 1928. And it was really the, the impetus to start organic farming in the late 30s and 40s. So we found 16 biodynamic and conventional farms. We looked at about 25 soil properties, and we measured over four years all the cost and all the profits and all the returns that went into these farms. And what we found, similar story with the soil, better soils, more topsoil, better structure, more microbes, more organic matter, higher fertility. Plants could move their roots through the soil a lot easier on the biodynamic soils. And the interesting thing was, and I made sure I told my economic buddies, that the biodynamic farms were as often financially viable as the conventional farms. So we published those results. And I kept thinking, okay, so I've done studies with soil. I've done studies with economics, productivity. There are other factors involved. 
And there was a farmer in the 90s, an apple farmer here in Washington State, and by the way, if you don't know it, we produce in Washington State about 55 to 60 percent of all the apples in the U.S., who was conventional, and he wanted to see what organic and integrated farming look like. So we set up these plots where we had organic, no synthetic fertilizers and pesticide, all organic and natural fertilizers and pesticides, conventional apple trees, and then the middle ground approach integrated using mostly organic practices but able to come in and use herbicides, insecticides when needed. And that's what integrated farming is. It's actually a certified system in European countries. Measured this for over six years, kept track of all the energy used on these farms, looked at the yields, looked at the quality of the apples, golden delicious. You want sweet, less tart apples, firm apples. If you don't, they get cold, they go in as sauce, the farmer doesn't make as much money. We looked at the impact of pesticides on the environment. What we found is that the organic was basically better than the in integrated, which was basically better than the conventional in almost all those areas. So better soil quality on the organic and integrated, but a little bit better on the organic. The conventional was last. The organic was the most energy efficient, integrated next, conventional, and so on. So now we have all these sustainability indicators. Oh, and by the way, the organic apples were firmer, sweeter, less tart, which is what you want. And that was kind of an interesting thing. We could conclude, since we have this suite of sustainability indicators, that the organic system was more sustainable, the integrated was second, and the conventional was third. I'm starting at this point in my career to get a vision of what agriculture should be. And you have to remember back in the 90s, 1997, 1998, organic food and beverage market was about 0.7% of the total food and beverage market in the United States. Today, it's about 4.5%. So it is growing and it's continuing to grow. The story goes on. We looked at strawberries in California. We found over 26 farms, 13 organic, 13 conventional, we found soils to be um, much healthier on the organic farms versus the conventional. We even looked at DNA. You can actually, remember there's those organisms, they have genes. You can actually look at those genes and if you know the organisms that are attached to those genes, you know which processes they carry out in the soil. Without those organisms, we would not be alive on the earth. They carry out nitrogen fixation, for example. They can take nitrogen from the atmosphere and make it available to the plant. Pretty cool. We found that there was more abundant genes and that there were more diverse genes in the organic. And when you attach them to those processes, the organic could carry on more processes and was more resilient than the conventional system. We also found that the strawberries had longer shelf life, more vitamin C, and more antioxidant activity. Meanwhile, back in the Palouse, I'm working with a colleague, David Huggins, and there are these farmers that have the audacity not to plow their fields. They're using this thing called no-till, and some of them have been doing it since the 80s. And if you think neighbors sometimes look at organic farmers weird, or if they did in the 90s, there were neighbors here looking at these no-tillers like they were crazy. They're so successful today that they have formed an organization of farmers called Shepherd's Grain. They make up farmers in Washington State, the Palouse, Idaho, even some Montana farmers. They sell Shepherd's Grain wheat. You can buy it seven miles away from here at the co-op. You can buy it in Oregon, all over on the west side at health food stores, Whole Foods. And they're certified by the Food Alliance and you know that when you buy their food that they are environmentally sound because of this certification that they get. So you don't just have to buy organic and there's also integrated and there's also no-till. And when I was in New Zealand, I learned about these farmers that were mixed crop livestock. They actually grew grain crops and animals at the same time. That's very difficult to do which is a very alternative system. And I learned that there are those systems. So I'm starting to picture, when I started out, it was kind of organic, conventional. Now it's 
organic biodynamic conventional with all these systems in between no-till integrated mixed crop livestock there's this guy out in Kansas his name is Wes Jackson he's had this dream for 30 years why can't our annual grain crops be perennial we grow them and they die we harvest why can't they grow and come back and grow the next year because their wild relatives are grasses that have these deep roots that go down 10 feet and build incredible soils. And so he has this dream. One of my grad students worked out there for 10 years now, works for the U.S. Agency for International Development. He's also pushing this dream, and there are now breeders all over the world that are basically breeding perennial grains. They're either hybridizing them from annual wheat with wheatgrass, or they're taking these wheat grasses and they're turning them into productive grains. And we're probably about 15 years away before we're actually going to have a large system of perennial grains. But it's a great dream, and it's a great dream for the future. <coughs> I have a grad student in Malawi, Africa. One of the farms over there, this is Rhoda. These are not her children. These are her grandchildren. She has a smallholder farm. It's about an acre and a half in size, maybe two acres. Most farmers grow maize. The soils are poor. They're naturally poor. It's an old continent. But they're also poor because of some of the farming practices over hundreds of years. To build soil, you have to add organic matter. That's why no-till and organic and biodynamic and in integrated work, those farmers are adding organic matter. So she started doing this system 20 years ago where she started growing shrubs and trees around and mixed in her crops. And it's a system called agroforestry. When they grow these phaederbia trees, it's actually called evergreen agriculture, and you can see these large trees with the maize. They fix nitrogen, share that with the corn. Soils become more productive. She went from growing corn and getting one ton per hectare of maize to three or four. She can feed her family, has food left over that she can sell, and she now has animals. Oh my goodness, there's a system called perenniation now. Now I'm really forming a vision of where we need to be in this century. Remember this? Remember the soil that we wipe off our feet? Well, I want the soil in the left hand on your right. It's darker, the structure's better, it has more organic matter. That soil actually came from a perennial grain field. Organically managed soils, integrated soils look very similar. They're darker in color, they have better structure, better root penetration. And that's what I want to see. I want to see that soil. And interestingly, those systems that have soil like this balance the sustainability indicator is much better than conventional. Conventional over the last 50, 60 years has given us incredible yields, but at the expense of, some cases, economics, certainly the environment, and also the social good, the well-being of the rural community. But these alternative innovative systems tend to balance the four better. They give us adequate yields, but they're also profitable they're better for the social good, and they're much better for the environment. They make it viable. And this is what I'm looking for for the future. This is the direction we have to go in. And you play a role. Your role is, is that you're consumers and you buy this food. And when you go to the market, you can actually buy organically certified food. You can buy shepherd's grain wheat. You can go to the farmer's market, and there are a number of integrated farmers in this area. They use pesticides and herbicides, but at a very limited amount, and they're growing animals. You can buy beef and lamb and chickens and turkeys. You just have to seek it out. It's available. In bigger cities, it's actually even more available. So you have a vote with your dollar. My dream is that we need to move toward these innovative systems. They're, they're here now. They're not abundant, but they could be. And I want to tell you, it all starts with the soil. Thank you so much.